Mango coconut foam soup. What was I thinking? Siracha pearls made from cold oil certification? Que ideia tá louca! Sorry, I know I'm late. What took you so long? My meditation class introduced in yoga and I got stuck in the cow face eagle arms. It's, it's a long story. Then trying to find everything on your ingredients list was, let's just say a challenge. So, which Adrian Adams culinary masterpiece is gonna wow Olivia James and change the face of space cuisine forever? I've got nothing, nada. We've got to start over. Okay, okay. I've been researching. There are muchas cosas things to consider for the perfect menu item. Space diets can't have too much sodium. The decrease in red blood cells creates unhealthy levels of iron durante el viaje espacial profundo. Vanish to English app during deep space travel. Got it. Astronauts need extra calcium in a weightless environment. And there are too many freeze-dried options, pero no hay alimentos frescos suficientes. Not enough fresh foods. Hey, can we just stick to one language, please? This is what I do when I'm stressed. Okay. I need to create something that is not only delicious, but nutritious. And if it could be stored safely for the long journey into space, that would be la cereza del pastel. Icing on the cake. Wait, that's it. What about the perfect dessert? You may be onto something. We will make something that's never been tried before. Like a souffle. These sites list souffles as a top five choice for foodies across all ages. And with a few modifications, it could be high in protein, low in fat, healthy breakfast. Olivia James, prepare to be dazzled. Here's what I need. We will start creating before Cafe Adams opens. 5 a.m. sharp, okay? Okay. Of course we will. <sighs> Calming breaths, bandwidth. <sighs> How much longer, Addison? I've tapped into Spacing's database. Should have the backdated security footage from Dr. Crawford's office soon. <laughs> Sorry, Em. You usually put my hard drive to sleep by now. I just need to confirm Dr. Crawford's story about her conversation with Professor Cato. It could shed some light on where he's hiding. Hey, stranger. I'm just saying goodnight. I'm in. Sending it to the monitor. You see the danger? We have to destroy the prototype now! We've spent the last 10 years making great progress, James. We can't just throw it all away. I trust you to find a way to safeguard it. Fine. If you won't do anything about it, I will. So he did tell Dr. Crawford. Where is this guy, Addison? And what's his next move? Hmm. Addison. I'm up! I'm up! So, why are you connecting him to a tin of curiously strong mints? It's my cleverly disguised portable lie detector. It flashes green when you're telling the truth and red when you're lying. <laughs> or if you have really bad breath. Yeah. Breath mint? <laughs> uh, no thanks. All good, it's the last one and I wanted it anyway. <laughs> now tell us what you did with the prince. And about Black Star's secret plan. Don't worry, girls. I'm gonna get some answers from our new friend here. I just hope I don't have to use any unsavory method. But that's entirely up to you, Chico. Yes, yes, it's true I work for Blackstar, but it's not what you think. He's telling the truth. I've been trying to warn you. Warn us? About what? Your evil plan to kidnap the prince? <sighs> Kinda late for that, buddy. Nobody's been kidnapped. Blackstar's not after the prince, they're after Data. Data? Yes, Data. They planted an illegal hacking device in the prince's luggage. What do you mean, a hacking device? It's a one of a kind. It, it took them over 10 years and cost a fortune to make. They're gonna use it to hack into a government satellite up there. See, this isn't about the prince at all. He's just a foil to hide their real intentions. But what about that phone call? Someone called Spacing to keep the prince off that flight. That was me. I've been doing whatever I can to get this launch canceled. If that device makes it onto that ship, Blackstar's gonna have the ability to do all kinds of terrible things, like steal people's personal data. I never thought Blackstar was capable of anything like this. 
Daron made us believe that he was a humanitarian and an innovator that wanted to use technology for great things. But it was all a front. Why not go to the policia? I tried. Ha! Lie! Uh, okay, okay, okay. Truth is... I'm scared of Daron and what he might do to me if he found out. He has all this information in his hands. Who knows what he's capable of? But why would an internet security giant want to steal personal data? Why else? Greed. Daron wants to get his slimy hands on as much info as he can so he can sell it for billions. Personal info? You mean like all our emails and contacts? Photos and texts? Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat? Instagram? Yeah, all that stuff. I think I'm gonna be sick. We have to stop them. Looks like we might be too late. Now, just moments away from watching Prince Xander take off into the skies. Cam, call your dad. Voicemail. He's gotta be in the control room already. There's no way I can reach him now. The hacking device. If we can find a way into Space Inc., we can stop it from getting on that spacecraft. I say we destroy it so Blackstar won't be able to harm anyone, ever. Cam's right, we have to get in there and wipe it out. We're running out of time. One thing I still don't understand. If nobody kidnapped the prince, then who took him from the safe house to the launch? I bet one of his staff members is working with them. A mole? A dirty, rotten mole. And I think I know exactly who it is. Ooh. Who is it? <laughs> Good luck. Guess I'll just wait here, take it back. <sighs> I know we're smart, but that was a hard exam. Good thing taking tests is your thing. Yeah, felt strange. Won't say that again. Uh, anyway, glad I found you. Addison has some intel on last week. I know where she lives! Go me! <laughs> Addison, school voice. OMG, these Alex totes know where she hangs. Not that school voice. Janitor's room. Janitor's room. Addison, tell Bri what you told me. Well, after a data search of Lazarus's recent online purchases, I tracked her address and determined she's living in the Glenwood Apartments! Feeling blue, dress it up with glitter glue! Ah! FYI, that was not me. Avi, she's still glitching. Hello? Private combo. Just chilling like a villain. Yeah, that didn't feel right either. Won't do that again. Uh, anyway. Hi, I'm new. I'm Michaela McAllister. Ember Evergreen. Well, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt y'all's chilling, but I need to water Larry the Janner's aloe vera. That man pays more attention to his mullet than his plant. There you go, darling. Drink up. <laughs> Oh, jackpot! Good trash. <laughs> I didn't know that trash could be good. It's for composting, which helps soil retain water and nutrients. I'm making biogas with an anaerobic digester for my tech fair project. When bacteria digest biodegradable material, they release methane, which can be harnessed as a source of energy. <laughs> and if any of y'all are thinking about stealing my idea, you'll find there's plenty of street in this country, girl. No, no, the trash is all yours. Do you want this? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, and it's a honey crisp. Y'all have excellent taste in produce. Uh, thank you. I think. You can learn a lot about people from their trash. Bye, y'all. Bye, Lucinda. It's hard on a plant living in a closet. That gives me an idea. Grab Lucinda and make a run for it? Another idea. Uh, hello. You got this. Michaela, 
Can you tell us about some of the programs you and the others have contributed? Uh, sure. Right this way. Uh, so this is Ember Evergreen and Bryden Bandwidth, and they've created, created Maywood Glen's very own vertical forest <laughs> by planting hundreds of plants and vegetation all over Stone Acres. We calculate that the plants will consume carbon dioxide and deliver between 75 and 100 kilograms of oxygen per day. And with my sick computerized controlled drip irrigation system, I mean sick like amazing, not sick like <laughs> we'll be able to minimize water use by 75 to 80 percent. We like to say drip is the new cool. We don't say that. We could. We won't. OK, uh, thanks, guys. Uh... Amazing, right? OK, <laughs> now you have to try this. Good job, girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is Adrian Adams and Cameron Coyle, and they created Cycle Sickle. Using pedal, power, the ice, and salt churn at a higher rate. Creating a culinary explosion of flavored helado, ice cream. Using zero energy from the grid. Try my culinary white chocolate with ancho chili pepper. Like me, fabulous with a bit of a kick. Wow, so inventive. Don't look at me. The students of Maywood Glen deserve all the credit. Michaela in particular, she is a wonderful role model for all young women, including my daughter. <laughs> Hey, sweetie. Mr. Stone, right in bandwidth? I remember. Drip is the new cool. And you would catch on. Hashtag trendsetter. I just wanted to let you know that I am a huge fan of Stone Television Network. I watch it all the time. And it actually inspired me to make my own web series. It's called Bryant's. You know, right in science. Bryant's. Get it? I do. I'll have to check it out sometime. Really? Send me the link. I want to see it. <laughs> oh, Jesus, he's gonna watch the show! Oh, Michaela. Do you think he's gonna like it? I just want to thank you again for spearheading the new engineers program, especially considering my history with your father. I was glad to help, and it's okay. My father hasn't been a part of my life for a long time. Well. As a way of saying thank you, my wife and I would like to invite all the volunteers from Maywood Glen Academy to our home for dinner one night. That'd be great. I'm sure Brian will be there. 